Hello everybody, um, today I'm going to be showing you how you can create these beam effects. I'm also going to run through how you can create some um, trail effects like this. So if I move this part you can see it's sort of leaving a trail behind. These are great for uh, all sorts of different moves and effects and I'm going to be running through how you can sort of create these types of effects um, using these uh, these images here. So I'm just going to run through real quick on how you can do this. So if you just bear with me. The very first thing we're going to do is, is we're just going to create a part and we're just going to drag this up here. So beams work in a special sort of way. So beams have to use two different attachments in order to work. Uh, and I'll be running through how this uh, is set up. So the first thing we're going to do is, is we're just going to add a beam. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the properties. So the properties are sort of similar to a particle. So if you've watched my previous video, I covered the particle system and how the properties actually work. So the beam has its own set of properties that you can edit and change to get the effect you want to happen. The main thing with beams is this can be a little confusing for people who haven't used them before. You have to use two different attachments. So if I head over to part and I create an attachment, so it's, it's similar to the attachments we used for the particle system. It's uh, basically a way just to anchor things into the 3D world and use them. Uh, so I'm going to show, showcase this. So if we go into model and we click on constraint details, you can actually start to see the constraints. You can actually see other constraints uh, behind this part, but you can see this little sphere. That's the actual attachment itself. And we need two of them. So I'm going to create another one. So this one's going to act as the start point. So I'm just going to rename this to start. And I'm just going to rename this to end. So we're going to take the end point. We're going to move it out into 3D space. So they have to be sort of separated from each other for you to actually see the beam itself. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop that back into the center of the part. And just to make it a little more clear, I'm just going to make the part invisible. And whilst I'm in here, I'm also going to change it to anchored and make it so that we can't collide with it if we're ever going to spawn this object on our player uh, in the future. So it's a good habit to get into. So I'm just going to move that roughly back to where it is. So on the beam itself, you'll notice that there is a texture field and that's what drives the actual beam itself. So if I take this little image here and copy the URL and we just highlight our part again and we pop the texture into here, um, that should start to load now. So what we need to do is, is we need to set the attachments. So we need to set this one as the start and this one as the end. So now you can see it starts to play the animation and you'll see it's not the best looking thing at the moment. Um, but using different shapes and different textures, you can get a lot of different results using beams. So all we need to really do here is, is we can start to edit these settings. So you'll notice that the color and light emission are very similar to the particle emitter. So if I start to increase that, you can see it starts giving a sort of glow effect. And if I take down the light influence and start cranking up the brightness, you can see I start getting an effect like this. And if we start changing the texture length, so that's how much this stretches out. So right now it's on stretch mode. You can change this to static and warp. I usually leave it on stretch. That's That gives the best looking effect usually. Um, so if we start to sort of stretch this down, you'll start to see that we get some sort of like beam like this. Now I don't really know what this is meant to be, but you could sort of see this as sort of like an energy attack or some cool effect for some part of your game. Um, the main thing I want to sort of talk about is the uh, transparency. So before in my last video I showed how you can enter into the graph. So we have to sort of do this here. So all beams start about a half transparency and the reason they do that is because they start off um, from one point to another 
and it's best to have it at half so that it's sort of see-through while you're looking at it. Now what I like to do is, is I like to sort of make the start of the beam sort of transparent and the end of the beam transparent that way there isn't this horrible sort of cut off here so you can actually see it so it sort of just abruptly ends and it looks a little bit bad so what I'm going to do to fix that is, is I'm going to drag this up and make the beginning faint and transparent but straight after that I'm going to bring this back down so that you can see it I'm going to drag this in a little bit so you'll see it starts to fade in get bright and then we're going to basically do the same here so we'll drag this down we'll drag this over Now, this isn't the best sort of effect in the world, but that's sort of how I do my beams. There's probably a better way of doing it. Um, another major thing I want to cover also is the face camera. So this allows, it's sort of, sort of similar to particles, so if I move my camera around, you can see that the beam is sort of staying in one line. Now, this is cool if you want to create like a sort of, you know, sword effect or some sort of like speed attack if someone's like hitting someone and there's like a line coming out of them or, or a dash move or where a line's maybe at the back of a player um, but if you want to have it face the camera at all times you just enable this and it will sort of change how it behaves so if I move the camera around you can see it sort of moves with the camera just so that it's always facing it um, another major thing to, to note is you can actually curve the beams as well so there is a curve section here so if I start increasing that you can see that it starts to curve the beam and I can do the same also on here so you can make like a sort of S shape or you can do this sort of thing and you can sort of see now based on the curve that's how I made this effect here and all it really is is just using this snowflake which is kind of weird so you'll find that using you know textures you, you you'll get a lot of different effects a lot of it doesn't really make sense but you will find um a lot of different textures if you just play around with them you can get some good results out of them uh, so it really is just a trial and error it's quite difficult to showcase this um but i will try my best so if we go on to segments here you see how there's sort of like the little cut off here sort of low low resolution if we increase that to 25 it gets a lot smoother you see it gives it a lot more points to work with another major thing is the width so this is the width on each end of it so if i put this to like five for instance this side is a lot larger than this size and you can see how i sort of created this effect now so if we come back over into here and let's say for instance we wanted to change the color so we would do the same thing as we have done before in the previous videos so I'll just move these windows out the way and we'll start creating some sort of effect so this goes from this color to white so let's say we wanted to create like a green or blue attack so we'll create this click on that and we'll change this to like a darker blue maybe like that it's maybe a little bit too bright actually of a blue, it's sort of like teal, so if I come over here and do that, it's more of an, it's more purple now, hold on, yeah, do that. And what you can do here is, you can actually um, create uh, offsets of this, so all I need to do really is just copy and duplicate the part and possibly rotate it like so. And you can see that you start to get some interesting, whoops, you can start to get some uh, interesting shapes and attacks going on here. And then, um, yeah, that's basically how I created this effect here. So it's, it's basically just a model with three separate parts inside of it with beams. And it's just using this exact same texture here. So if I were to change this texture to, say, for instance, this texture here, you'll just get a random different effect pretty much and a lot of it is a little bit um trial and error so this might not look the greatest yeah I mean, it doesn't look the best but you can you can edit the settings here so you can start changing stuff so you can do that so that's that's quite cool looking uh, you can also increase the texture speed also so it goes from it goes from zero to one but you can push this higher than one so if i put this to say five you can see it starts to get a lot faster 
Um, you can also play with the Z offset. Now this is something I never actually covered on my particle video. I may make a second one just to cover some of the extra features that you can do with it. But the Z offset, it simply lets you uh, change how it's rendered in the engine. So if you change the Z offset to say like negative one, it means it will be behind other things. So if I were to say create a block rig like this and quickly rotate it. So this is my little guy. So if I put the beam sort of through him like so you can see how it's sort of going through him. If I were to change this to say Z offset 1 you see how it's in front of him now or I put it to zero, it's back inside of them. So this is just a nice way to layer effects on top of each other. So if you can't see an effect, you can change the Z offset and that will let you see it. It's sort of like layers in Photoshop. Uh, whatever's on, you know, at the top will, will render ahead of everything else. Um, but yeah, that, that should cover beams pretty well. This is sort of like a curved beam, but you can create like straight ones as well. So if I just duplicate this, and let's say I take off the curves. So we'll take off these curves and make it straight. So that's the sort of effect you get now. And the reason I'm getting that effect is because I've just made the end very small. So if we put that to 0 0.5, it's sort of like a spear effect or something, or a, a sort of lance effect where someone's stabbing a lance or something like that. Um, but you can, beams are fairly straightforward, they're, they're not as complicated as the uh, particles. It's just getting your hands on some decent textures, which you can do from the toolbox or online. Uh, or you can make your own inside of Photoshop or After Effects. Um, but yeah, I'll, um, what I will do for this video is, is I'm actually going to upload this Roblox place for everyone to download. So you can get all of these textures without having to manually download them. You can just grab this place and take everything from inside of here. Uh, I don't mind giving it away um, as long as it helps people um, understand how to do this. Uh, the next thing I'm going to cover is this here. So these are uh, trails. So they work similarly to, um, to beams. So if I just make this transparent, I've coloured it green just so that we can see it. The reason it's called stepper is because I was using it in an effect before, so it steps through. But this is basically how it works. So these are sort of like beams, but they only activate when you move the part, which is fantastic. So if you can attach this onto like a player, and whenever you move around, you can actually leave like a trail behind you, which is quite cool. Um, so I'm just going to make this invisible or semi-transparent. We'll do, do that. And you can see here it does that. So trails work similarly. So if, if you want to add a trail, you just simply go here, add a trail. And there's the trail there. So if we click on this trail, we can actually see that all I've done is, is I've just set it to face the camera. And the texture that I'm using for this one is this here. This image there is the one I'm using for the trail. And all I'm really doing here is, is I've just put the texture length to 0 0.1. I've made it stretch as I did before. And you can actually see that the transparency is similar to the other beam. But the difference here is, is there's actually an emission that comes with trails. So they're similar to particles or, or a little similar to particles. Beams aren't really. Uh, they have the same sort of properties. But trails have an emission. So you can set the lifetime of it. So if I move this you can see that it only has a lifetime of, of about half a second. So if I just quickly change that to like two seconds for instance. If I move this it will stay around for a lot longer. Like so. So every time you move this it's actually emitting sort of like a particle. So I'll pop that back down to about half a second. And this maximum length value and minimum length value shows how much you want it to move. So if I put that to like five for instance, this is going to be extremely sort of quick. But yeah, you, you can see that it's like, you know, changed the length of it. But you, you do have to play around with, with the trails depending on the texture you've got. It's all editing. So it's hard to get the exact values to tell you what to input to get what you want. Um, but yeah, you can sort of see if, if you were to create like a, 
sort of effect where this part was to move around really fast on a script. So if you were to do something like this, or like zigzag around, you can start to get some really, really nice effects. Now pe people use these a lot for Bezier curves. So people will use this and generate a curve and then they will animate this little part along the curve and it looks like something's shooting out the curve, which I may go into in a future video. Um, but yeah, tra trails are pretty interesting. You can pop them onto the end of swords and things like that and uh, start to get some really, really interesting shapes. Uh, as for the width scale, uh, I just made it go from, from being quite large to, to quite small as it plays. So it's it does that and sort of fades off and I just changed the colour uh, to blue but I could change that to anything, I could put that to a yellow. Um, so yeah and that just uses two attachments as well and the attachments that I've used for this, if I just come over here and go to constraints, they're just sort of like that. So they're, they're, they're not as big as the other part, other beams but they are just, it's just a short little trail that I'm creating here. So if you look here see how it does that. It's not the best trail in the world but it's just a sort of showcase um, how you can make this. So I hope that this covers um, beams and trails enough. Um, I don't really make them as often as I do, uh, as I should do. Um, so I don't really have a lot to, to showcase uh, for you today and I don't want to make this video any longer than my last one. Um, but yeah, this just should show you how to sort of recreate this sort of effect. And when you try to, you know, script a beam, you can simply just enable or disable them uh, in order for them to actually work. Uh, so you can see the enabled here. If I turn that off, it turns off one of them. And if I grab all of the beams, so in a script, all you would do is you would just grab all of these beams and disable them. Uh, but yeah. That's pretty much this video. Um, I just want to say thank you for everyone who has watched my videos so far. I'm trying to get better at this and I'm trying to expand. If you can leave a comment, like and subscribe, it would be really, really helpful. Um, I probably will look into doing scripted attacks and scripted um, sort of, you know, particle effects. The issue is, is these videos can take quite a while to actually do live. So I don't want this to be like another 40 minute video, but it should be close uh, to around 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. Um, but this should give you a sort of good clear picture on how to do this. Uh, if there's anything that I can improve on or anything that you guys don't understand, just leave a comment. I'll try to improve as best I can. Um, but I do hope that this helps. All right. So take care.